All right, today we're going to be looking at something called Le Chatelier's Principle. And since we've been dealing with this thing called reaction quotient, which way does a reaction shift if it isn't at equilibrium? This one deals with something pretty similar, and it's a lot more qualitative than quantitative. And what it says is this. It says when a change is imposed on a system at equilibrium, then the equilibrium will shift to counteract the change. Here's what we mean. Here's a pretty straightforward reaction. This is called the Haber process, and it is a reaction by which we make uh, ammonia from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, and it is an exothermic reaction, meaning that it produces energy. It gives off energy as the reaction runs. So what we mean by uh, Le Chatelier's principle is causing a stress to a reaction, adding something to it that changes the concentration that changes something. And what we wanted to be able to do is predict which way this equilibrium is going to shift. So, for example, what happens to the equilibrium if we were to add N2? Well, we know N2 is a reactant. And so, of course, if the value for K, let's get the value for K for this reaction. Let me look it up really fast. Well, we don't even need the value for K. All we really need is the equilibrium expression, NH3, 2 over N2 and H2. And of course, if we add N2, it's going to shift the number of reactants higher than they should be. So of course, adding N2 would cause the reaction to shift towards the products. In other words, we would make more product to reduce the amount of N2 that we've added and attempt to regain this value for K. By the same token, if we were to add NH3, and this is going to uh, add more product, that would, of course, have to shift the reaction towards the reactants because we would want to reduce the reactants. We would want to reduce the amount of product present uh, to resume K. And that's pretty straightforward. What if we were to do something like, say, increase temperature? And this is, of course, an exothermic reaction that we're talking about. Keep in mind that in an exothermic reaction, it produces heat. It produces energy as a part of the reaction. And that means that in an exothermic reaction, heat is a product. It means that when the reaction runs, it gives off heat. That increases the temperature. So if we were to increase the temperature with the, at which the reaction was running, it would have the same effect as adding a product. So if we were to increase the temperature of an exothermic reaction, it would have to shift the reaction backwards towards the reactants, away from the production of heat. By the same token, if we did this with an endothermic reaction, in an endothermic reaction, heat is a reactant. You have to add heat to get the reaction to run. So if we were to increase the temperature on an endothermic reaction, it would have the same effect as adding reactant. And that would drive the reaction towards the products. How about, let's take this, we look at this equation one more time, N2 plus 3H2 yields 2NH3. Let's remember that they're all gases. And because they're all gases, they're all bouncing around. So what happens to a reaction that is all gases if we were to change the volume? And let's remember that over here on this side, we have one molecule of N2 and three molecules of H2. It's four molecules bouncing around, taking up space. On the other side, there's only two. 
So let's say that we were to decrease the volume, have some effect of decrease of volume by decreasing the volume, increasing the pressure. In that case, the reaction shifts towards the side with fewer molecules. In other words, in order to take up less space, the reaction shifts towards the side that isn't bouncing around as much. It would have the same effect if we increased the pressure. You remember from Boyle's law that P1 V1 equals P2 V2 and that uh, volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So if we were to increase the pressure, it would have the same effect as decreasing the volume and that would shift our reaction towards fewer molecules. So here's a little recap of everything that's going on. And if you get lost, this is a good thing to check. And there are three stresses that we'll put on a reaction. Concentration, temperature, and pressure. And this tells you exactly what's going on, what happens when you change each. Uh, pressure and volume are pretty interchangeable. They just have opposite effects. Increasing pressure is the same as decreasing volume and so on and so forth. Let me draw your attention to this sentence down here about what happens when we use a catalyst. Remember that using a catalyst might increase the rate of the reaction, but it doesn't change the position. So if you hear anything about a catalyst, keep that in mind. And also notice that here in changing temperature, it doesn't really say anything about what it does to K, but let's remember that changing K, or changing temperature has the effect of changing the position of K, especially for gases, because let's remember this equation for calculating Kp. It's equal to Kc times Rt delta N. Well, this T definitely has a part uh, to play in Kp. So when we're talking about gases and partial pressure, that definitely will change the value of the equilibrium position. So keep that in mind as we take this for a spin, okay? See you on the next one.